For more on Tesla's first quarter and what's to come, we want to bring in Mark Fields. He is the former CEO of Ford. He serves on the boards of Hertz and Qualcomm, and he's a CNBC contributor. And Mark, just looking through this, I mean, it's a little reminiscent of what Amazon would do from time to time, which is making sure that they are going for growth over profitability. Yeah, I mean, listen, you, you, you saw from Musk's comments yesterday, they're, they're going to sacrifice uh, profits for growth. And I think the way they're looking at it is, listen, with the, the market growing for EVs pretty uh, steadily right now, combined with the federal incentives, it's a bit of a land grab. And he wants to you know, expand his uh, number of vehicles in the market before a number of competitors come in. Because there's advantages to having a larger what they call car park, whether it's more parts and service business, or he can sell more software features down the road, or ultimately, if they ever get to autonomy. So, you know, he's using pricing as a as, as a cudgel uh, against the competition. And, you know, he's doing it because he has positive margins on EVs versus the competition, which uh, may not. You like the strategy? Well, you know, <laughs> I think there were a, a lot more worrying things coming out of this call, earnings call, than positives. I mean, you have, uh, obviously, revenue was up uh, about 24, 25 percent versus last year, but below their their uh, long-term objective about 50%. Profits were down, margins are down, inventory's up, uh, plant utilization is below where it needs to be, and negative cash flow as well as input costs up. So you look at that and you go, hey, you know, when you look at pricing and using pricing to grow uh, demand, you gotta ask yourself a question, how low can you go? Alternatively, you know, they do know advertising. so. That's a way to stoke demand, and I'm sure there's debates inside uh, uh, Tesla right now whether they should do advertising versus continuing to cut prices and reduce margins. And, I, I, look, I guess part of this comes down to he wants to hit these numbers, 1.8 million vehicles they're expecting to, to make this year, maybe as high as 2 million. You want to make sure you move those cars, too. And if, if you have to sacrifice in the short term, is it worth that game, though, I guess? Well, you know, to your point, uh, both what you just mentioned and what Phil mentioned before, they talked about production numbers, 1.8 million, 2 million. You have to talk about actually selling vehicles. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think Elon sounded, if you just stripped off that that was a uh, Tesla earnings call, you could, you know, put yourself in a time machine and go back to what the domestic automakers were talking about, you know, 10, 15 years ago about moving the metal. So, you know, there's a certain point in which, you know, you have to keep reinvesting in the business. As you know, they had negative cash flow in the quarter, and they have to invest a lot in their, their products, expanding their product line, uh, improving the product line that they have right now. And, you know, they got a lot of capacity going on. So I think from an investor standpoint, you know, you walk away from that call with questions around what is the real EV demand, at what cost, and what's going on with their pricing strategy. Although, Mark, if you're looking at, at margins, clearly not the margins the street was anticipating, not the margins Tesla had told them to anticipate of 20 percent or so, but even at 11 percent, that's quite a bit better than most of the old uh, car companies. Uh, Phil had told us earlier that number is closer to 5 to 6 percent. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Their uh, operating margin on their total business is about uh, double the GMs and, and more so than Ford's. So, listen, they're in a much better position than the rest of the automakers. But, you know, when you look at the valuation of the company going forward, and a lot of that valuation was based on growth and high margins, you know, the, the stock's going to react the way it's, uh, it's going to react. But, you know, from a competitive standpoint, they do, they are in a much advantageous position. But keep in mind, the established automakers are coming out with a lot of good products. They know how to drive scale and reduce costs over time. And I think the real winners out of this are obviously consumers, uh, but also at the same time, there's some unintended consequences here, Becky, around consumers basically saying, hey, I'll, you know, if there's been six price cuts since the beginning of the year, I'll just wait to buy a Tesla. And if you're a Tesla owner, uh, you know, you're not very happy right now because the residual value of your vehicles just went down a lot. And that's going to matter when they come back to the market for another vehicle.